Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Joseph Clough and this is episode 900. That's it. We have collectively together reached 900 episodes, which is an interesting kind of thing because it means a lot of time, a lot of effort over the years has been put into creating this. And I really honestly and genuinely hope you are enjoying my work. And I do hope to continue producing more episodes because like 90% of all podcasts, they don't go past three episodes. In fact, the average amount of episodes a podcast gets to is around 50 or so. So the fact that we've created 900 and in the last few years these have been broadcasted live just like this one on youtube so we have a bit of a pre-show and an after show and it's been real it's been a real pleasure getting to like know you and be connected with you and also for those who personally email reach out to me show or saying that my work has been helpful to them so i would just want to also with the celebration of 900 i want to just say thank you for being a listener because I remember I've said this a, a while ago that the first time I created a podcast is when you had to have like your own RSS feed. Um, and it was like on something called like Feed Burner or something like that. And this was like 2012 or so, or even earlier, I don't know, because that's just historic now. But I just thought I wanted to get out there and hopefully put some words out there. In the beginning, I used to take requests all the time. And it's crazy to think that we went from just a couple of episodes or maybe first 10, 15, only getting maybe 10 or 15 downloads per episode, if that. And I was probably me listening to it to make sure that it was okay. Then now we're getting like 160 to 200,000 downloads every single month on the podcast. And to this date, having put up like 1,200 uh, YouTube videos, which includes a podcast, and just kind of getting all those views as well kind of blows my mind. So yeah, I've been doing this since 2012. At the very least, it may be a year or so earlier than that as well. So it's been an interesting journey along the way. And the reason I wanted to talk about that briefly, because it is a journey and you're probably going through a journey right here and right now. Maybe your life isn't exactly how you would like it to be. Maybe you're experiencing fear. Maybe you're, you're experiencing lots of noise in the world. There is a lot going on and it can feel hard to figure out where to turn and what direction to go to. And I know that because I've been there too. Like just starting out the podcast, I had no idea how to do it. I just remember paying someone to set up uh, a feed burner account to have my own RSS feed. I used to kind of host it all on my own um, server and all those kind of things. Sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. So wherever you are right now, realize that it is a process and it can be also an opportunity to become something that you could never even imagine. I never imagined getting these two 900 episodes. I never imagined about the thousands of downloads we get per episode. Like, I think it's like a few first week or so, we get like a 5,000 per episode or more. I haven't checked in the last um, this year, probably. But it starts with nothing, right? You, you've got something in your mind, you got something on your heart, and you're like, I want to make a change because what is showing up is not to your liking. So you've got to get yourself in a place of being uncomfortable, even in this present stuff showing up. Like that's the waking point. That's where you start to make a huge decision as to where you want to be. I mean, do you want to stay where you are or do you want to actually learn and grow? Do you want to be able to look away from the fear or face it and go, look, it's fear or it's a limiting belief, 
but I am ultimately in control of that. That is happening within my own mind. Like no one is making me feel that way. I've got to choose to experience what I'm experiencing. And if I dislike it, I've got to wake up to it. And the reason why I say that, because many people will know, but I used to experience significant anxiety growing up. Lots of, not panic attacks, but like dread and blushing and fear and what you'd probably class imposter syndrome, but it wasn't around back then. And I know what it's like to feel stuck and not know. In fact, throughout my whole journey, running a business and trying to keep all my free work going, it is a ever ongoing journey to be able to hopefully create more and be more and serve more. That is what I want to do. And sometimes I've got to be my own biggest critic. And I think that can be okay. So realize you can be critical of your present situation because that critic, if you use it right, allows you to be accountable for what is really happening. Not for all the, what people have done to you, but like be accountable to go, look, I'm going to make a change in my life. And then you, having had that accountability, we want to kind of step into the dreamer because you can choose and define your own dreams. So we know where we are, we're waking up that this isn't right, and now we're starting to dream and get more clarity as to where we want to be, even in all the noise. And then you've got to get yourself to be in a place of being a realistic or a realist so you can discern the difference of what's really happening, where do I want to be, and am I willing to do whatever it takes? I've got to assume responsibility for my life. I got to assume responsibility in taking back the control rather being than the effect and there's going to be huge effects out there like people will do mean things to you unfortunately it's a way of life but you don't want it to allow you to define who you are because you get to choose the definition of who you're going to become you can use all that stuff and noise and the contrasting experience of life to your gain to really choose who do you want to become. Sometimes you've got to let go of who you are to be the person you want to be. You have to assume the feeling of your desires and act upon it with that deep, undeniable, undeniable even conviction. You have to assume those feelings that almost like you're holding so strong in your mind your goal your dream that no one's going to take that away from you because like i said you get to define your goals and dreams no one else can no one can define that well i guess they can if you choose to allow that definition to be true but i like to think that you are so much more than that and no matter what you're going through right now there's always a way that you can achieve your desires. Yes, it starts with you. Yes, it's going to be hard work, but it's going to be okay. It's like I always like to think is it's hard work, but it's harder staying the same, right? Like if we carry on being what we're doing or being around who we are or taking that um, contrasting experience and thinking that's going to be our only reality, that is hard. That is so much harder than putting the initial ethic and or effort and work ethic into doing what is right for you. So you got to hold whatever that dream is in your mind. You got to protect it. We did an episode around protecting your home. Like you are your home. Yeah, we may have the physical home around us, but in your mind, that is your home and you've got to choose who you allow in that experience of being around you. You want to be able to try to be surrounded that people will lift you up. I think the greatest value of any relationship, friendship, whatever it may be, I like to think is just lifting up. So if people aren't lifting you up, then maybe it's time to be able to surround ourselves with those who want to lift us up and we want to lift them up. Because that means that goal and dream is so much more easier when people give you that lifting up experience. And remember, it's going to take time. Like these 900 episodes, you may sometimes think 
And I'm not saying this for like um, sympathy or anything like that, because I love doing what I do. Yes, it's a lot of work, but 900 episodes, are like 25 minutes each at least, there's another hour or so on top of that in all the editing. So if we're thinking about all the amount of time for it to really be successful, it is gonna take time. But embrace that time is good. The time to work on yourself and cultivate yourself to what you want out of life. So you can be of purpose, you can be in purpose. You can start to decide and declare what you want out of life. So if you were just to ask yourself right here and right now, what am I gonna declare my life to be like? That when I look back, I'm gonna go, this was a defining moment or a part of a defining moment. Cause like I said, it takes time. But what is gonna be like your statement or your mantra? One thing that I like to think about personally is leaving the world in a better place than I found it. That's a, a, a quote I heard years and years ago, and that really stuck with me. Another one which I, um, I thought about myself, I think I did, which is enlightening the illusionary darkness. There is only love. I'm the everlasting moment of oneness. I am love. So if you start to live by like that mantra, you're actually starting to define your values. That's what they are. And when you start to define those values by declaring that this is my new standard I'm going to live up to. I'm going to put in the work to get to this place. Yes, I'm going to sacrifice things. Yes, I'm going to give up things. Yes, I'm going to have to allocate different levels of my time because I only have a certain amount of time in the day. And if I want to achieve the things I want to achieve, maybe I've got to dial back aspects of things so I can dial in to what I really want to be doing. But embrace that. Anything you really desire is worth the work you're putting into it. And when you think about the work that you're putting into it, you're putting it into yourself. Like you are in in of itself, you're telling yourself you're worth it. Because I know a lot of people listen to my program or my podcast, sorry. They go, I'm not worthy, deserving, capable, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of being found out. But if you're putting enough adequate time over the other things, you're telling your unconscious mind, even though it doesn't feel like it, because it is an unconscious belief, you are telling your unconscious mind you're actually worth more. And I believe you are worth more. I believe that you have everything in your, uh, your capacity to achieve what you really want. I fully believe that you are, by nature, by birthright, that you are loved, that you're worthy, that you're deserving enough. Unfortunately, because of that contrasting experience, we've started to define those limiting beliefs. But those beliefs are not who you are. I always say the, the sentence like, belief is the enemy of knowing or knowingness. So if you have a belief about yourself, you're actually usually disregarding the knowing of who you really are. Because whatever you think you are, you are always more than that. Like you cannot define who you really are, like your essence and your quality and all of those things, because you will never even touch the surface of how amazing, how beautiful, how worthy and deserving and loving that you can be. And I don't say that in a negative way, I'm just saying that, um, as in like you can never really get to that place, because you can, but you're always gonna be more than that as well. So put in the work and the time to be able to get to that place where you can go, do you know what, I, I am worthy. I just know it, I don't just believe it, I know it, I know that is my birthright to be able to have the life that I want. I know that I can be free of fear. I know that, yeah, I mean, even for me personally, do I go through stuff in life? Absolutely. I would probably actually say the last six months or from May has probably been the most challenging experience that I've had to date. Maybe not compared to when I was young when I had all the issues, but I would say the last six months has been really, really crazy in terms of trying to help and support many 
through my work that I do. Like lots of challenges along the way and trying to build back all the things I need to do. And that's why I am sometimes my worst critic because it does hold me a level of accountable, uh, accountability even. So sometimes, and by the way, just to backtrack, when I'm saying being a critic, I'm not saying, oh, you gotta tell yourself you're a bad person. No, but I just mean you gotta critique. This is the situation I'm in. I've got to wake up to that accountability that I don't like it, rather just thinking that this is my lot in life. That's where you could say it's taking a stand, it's taking accountability, it's taking the outlook that this is to my displeasing and I want to be able to get in a state of pleasing, of being the person that I want to be. So even in the storm, even in the darkness, even in the trauma, even in the toxic situations, we can still navigate ourselves to where we want to be. That's got to be our plan together. We got to, we're in this together through the podcast and through all the other things that I do. And I say we together because I always think about you as I'm doing these things, even if we've never met sometimes, because I know I've met uh, some people, that I wanted to think about as like, look, we're moving in the right direction. And if we hold that in our mind, that this is where I want to be, and I'm going to make sure I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm Yes, I'm going to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and act upon it with conviction. I'm going to hold that vision of what I want for life so strong that no one's going to take that away from me. And I'm going to live up to that standard. I'm going to give up who I am to be that standard. I'm going to elevate myself so that means I'm sending a signal to my best friend or your best friend being the unconscious mind that we're worth this together. You see, when I do my main program, sometimes we talk about that maybe, and we, we talked about this briefly on another episode as well, but like when you were growing up, maybe you didn't have the right person in your life to show you differently. And I bet right now, that you, if you could go back in time, you'd want to be that person. You'd want to be the person that you needed back then. So that is why we've got to be more today. We've got to be the person we needed back then. We need to be the person who we're going to be in the future. And we're going to just go all in on our happiness and our success, where it be financial abundance, where it be in your career, where it be in your passion, where it be in your hobby, where it be in your relationship, your health. Um, literally anything. You want to be able to hold that in your mind and go, nothing less than this. Because I am more than where I presently am. I am more than enough. I am going to get to the place where I'm going to touch upon and live within that I am worthy, deserving enough. And I say touch upon once again, because whatever you think you are, you are always more in every single way. And then you start to be the example. And then, weirdly enough, things start to show up. It's really, really weird. When you take a stand for who you are in your dream, new things will show up just like magic. It's not magic. Well, it could be a little bit of magic in there as well. But it's the decoding of your your perception in a different way, on a biological way. When you take that stand, your brain's going to look for more things which support that value system, which supports that evidence as to why you're enough and why you're capable and all those things. So have a clear definition in your mind. Almost like, think about it like this. You know, we get companies and they have a, a mission statement, a mission statement. Write yourself out a mission statement. Because what does those, those mission statements have? They have core values. What are your core values going to be on this journey? In my program, we actually have a mission statement. That's where I kind of got it from in many ways. Because the, you, you have to then live up to those standards. You want to be able to live up to that sense of value. And it could be, well, this is my values in a relationship. Maybe it could be that I lift people up and they lift me up. That's going to be a high quality value in my mission statement. It could be 
around other areas. It could be in a specific area that you have your mission statement. It could be toward this specific outcome that you want. That you're going, this is my mission statement for this outcome. And then you want to start to write that out and you want to be able to look at it every day and go, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this. You see, something what fuels me personally is when I get emails saying where people were and when they were close to taking their life, for example, and then they found my work and then they didn't take their life. And now they're an inspirational. We, I don't think we said it on the episode, but someone was on the, the pre-show of someone doing that who actually is now a mentor, who is now um, working with people who were, he, were in similar situations that he was in. Like, that inspires me. That's what makes me want to keep on doing this work. And I don't know how long these episodes will last for. I've been thinking about it the last week or so, because it is a bit of a 900 kind of cool milestone. But I've, if I'm going to keep on doing this, I've got to be more dynamic in what it is. I've got to be able to think about it differently and do different things to be able to keep it helping more people. And so anyway, regardless of that, whatever happens there, but that inspires me. So you want to be the example of what can be done, where it be for your child. If you have a child, you want to be that example where it be for your partner you want to be that example even with the things which happen but it's about those values and the qualities that you bring out you see that stress and that contrasting um, trauma or darkness that can be the bathing place where you decide and uh, and discover who you're going to be sometimes that darkness can feel like it's the worst that sometimes that darkness can actually birth who you really want to be. Like, I got into doing this, for example, and I'm talking a lot about me, so, but it's episode 900, so stay with me. The only reason I'm doing this, all these episodes, the 1,200 videos on YouTube, the many, probably had 2,000 sessions in the app or more, probably more than that. If you include custom, it's be way more than that. But the only reason why I do trainings, events, my main program, or um, the app, the podcast, the free sessions, is because I was in pain. Because I was in that so-called darkness. That is what caused me to ignite something. Like it was that wake-up call that I cannot carry on blushing. I cannot carry on being anxious and dreading, doing the job I really disliked. It got to that point where I kind of, the spark was created. And the metaphor that I always like to say is, I think I may have said this in a previous episode, after 900, you do start repeating. So the metaphor that I see for being in that darkness, that you are in that darkness and you're a candle. And then something gets ignited. I don't know what ignites you from this. Maybe this episode, maybe it's more trauma, maybe it's more um, noise in the world, maybe it's a relationship breakup, whatever it is, something happens and you're ignited. And you're like, I'm gonna live up for more. And that flame starts to get bigger because you're now that candle which has been lit up. And then you see more in the darkness. And it's almost as if the more you start to live and be more passionate, you start to light up more of your environment. And then weirdly, somewhere along the line of that journey of like being ignited and getting that flame bigger and bolder, you start to see other candles who which aren't lit up either. And then you go, huh, I was like that once before. I was like that. And then something ignited me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ignite with my flame, this candle, which has been put out for all the reasons in the world it could be. You're going to just ignite that flame on that candle, or that wick on that candle to become a flame. And now the two of you see more lightness and the bigger they get brighter, you get brighter. And then you see more candles. So stay with me on this. And you just ignite one by one by one by one. And after a while, 
you are just in that light and you're surrounded with other candles. And that is the analogy that I like to think. So once I was in that darkness and then something sparks me and then I lit up and I started to see this and then I fell into this and that's what I wanted to like if I see with these candles through the podcast episodes that's what I want to light up I want to light up light up light up but I can only light other people up if I am shining as much as I can and sometimes you shining bright will blind others a podcast um, a listener actually said that to me that sometimes shining bright will blind others And that's because you're not in resonance with that person. Those are the people who are trying to bring you down. Those are the people um, are trying to hold you back sometimes. So it's okay to blend others in that metaphor because you're shining bright. You're just operating from a different place. And that is where that magic shows up because just magical things happen. Those people seem seem to be... um, What's the word I'm thinking that they are not propelled, but um, I told you it's a live live stream. You're, they're moving away, right? You know the word I'm thinking about. They start to be compelled to move away from like a battery, right? They're, they're, or a magnet, sorry. They start to repel you, right? They get further and further away. That's part of the magic as well. So get down to that thinking of the mission statement, get down to the thinking of taking massive inspired action, get down to thinking of your values. What are you going to take a stand for? Be at peace in the darkness if you use it for that ignition, when you get ignited and then you start to be a part of something because even if you don't do it overtly like me doing a podcast episode, the very nature of you transforming, you kind of show what is possible. I mean, was it Gandhi said, be the change you want to be in a while, but sometimes you've got to be the change you want to, um, well, people will see you having made the change and that just changes everything. They have an example of what can be done. I don't might know if that's your child. I don't know if that's your friend or your neighbor. You don't know how far the ripple effects go when you start to make a change. So, It can be such an enlightening experience when you start to take that stand. And it doesn't matter where you start, it's about where you're gonna be, right? You start right here. Today is a new day, we're gonna start right here and do whatever it takes. We're gonna define, we're gonna draw a line in that sand and go, look, I am ready to no longer have this. I'm done with it. I'm more than that. I might not believe it yet unconsciously, but I'm gonna make that decision. I'm gonna be so dedicated, rather being dedicated to stay the same, because that's the only two options. Decide to stay the same or decide to be more today. So build into that vision. Hold that image in your mind as often and as like supercharge it as much as possible. And that's where you're going to go. Yeah, get the help around you. Use the episodes, use the hypnosis app, work with coaches. It's not a cost to work with someone. It's not a cost to work with me or my program. It's an investment within you. And you are, to me, worth investing. And I'm not saying, look, because I want your money or anything like that. I'm saying that you are an investment. Whether it be through time, you are worth investing in time to get your life the way you want. You are like um, like a company stock. You want to be able to invest in that. You want so it grows and gets bigger and bolder. You want to be able to protect your assets yourself. And I'm doing lots of crazy, weird little analogies here, but trying to paint different images in your mind that hopefully resonate and it allows you to feel that, yes, I am my life. My life is my perception. There's only my subjective viewpoint. So therefore, I've got to create a better level of ownership of where I'm going to be. Do whatever it takes. Give up the things which no longer serve me. Do more of what's going to get me the return. Whether it be through money, whether it be through time, but that investment just keeps on coming back. I always invest in my production, my episodes, in time, in um, working with people to get better as a person. 
all those things and I see it as a return to hopefully help more people. And that could be the exact same thing for you. When you transform, you will have to, by definition, transform others. Either to let people leave so they don't, because they're not in resonance with you anymore, because you're resonating and vibrating from a different place, or you attract the right people into your life because you are operating from that different space, that different resonance. So just do whatever it takes to keep on going. You're so much more than you could ever imagine. And if you are enjoying even just one of the episodes, out of a 900, if there's just one you like, I mean, I don't know why you'd keep listening to 900 just to find the one, but if there was one aspect of an episode you liked, or if you enjoyed like, or got value from any of my work, I really appreciate if you left a review or you became a subscriber of the app and that means we reinvest into the app where it be making the functionality, where it be me putting more time into episodes. And you will notice it is the cheapest hypnosis app out there as well. So I wanna make it as affordable for everyone, but even just leaving a review, whatever it is, if you enjoy my work, that's that'd be so, so kind of you. And um, then together, hopefully we can inspire others to download it or to listen to it. They can listen to all the free episodes as long as they're getting help. And sometimes, or I say every time really, your words as a review will just totally inspire someone to go, I'm gonna give this a shot. And um, yeah. So with that, this has been episode 900. And I do hope to make it to the thousand mark, hopefully, um, if not more. And I look forward to speaking to you on a future episode. So many thanks and goodbye.